Monica Pyle says her life is proof that the goodness of God can restore and heal victims of abuse. Of the goodness of God. She first heard about Christianity visiting her grandparents and their church. I would hear people, you know, obviously the, the pastor would talk about God, God this, God that, but I didn't really know anything. So um, just that I was safe. And it was her older brother, Bobby, who kept her safe, especially during lean times growing up in the projects of Leavenworth. A lot of times we didn't even have electricity. So we would, my brother would ask the neighbors right next door to give us the extension cord and we would drape it through the back window. And we would, in the dark, have a box fan. We'd get this towel, we'd get it wet and we'd put it over the, the box fan and we'd lay there in our underwear because it was just so hot, you know, in the summertime. And uh, in the wintertime, he would boil hot dogs for us on the coil heating units, you know, the metal coil heating units. And so he, he really took care of me. But Monica says she was never safe with her mom as she and Bobby were physically abused by their mother since birth. As um, abuse had gotten really, really bad in my house, I correlated what I heard in those, ch in those church services with it, that God saves you and that He makes things better and all of that. So I would go into this little makeshift laundry room and I would turn the dryer on so that I wouldn't get beat or get in trouble for crying. And I would sit on top of the dryer and I would pray out loud to God to help me and save me and take me out of the situation I was in. Sadly, her situation got worse as her mother moved from one home in the projects to another. My mom ended up with um, a man and she uh, met him here actually. And she became married to him and he ended up um, sexually uh, abusing me. And so that's when the, the SRS, or D, what they call DCF now, had gotten in and removed me from the home. But SRS only removed Monica and not her brother. Traumatized by her experiences, she lost trust in people and felt victimized by the foster care system. It made me feel like we had no hope, like the system was against us and um, I didn't trust this anybody to help us. There was nobody, all these people that kept coming to me, oh, we're just putting you in this foster home to help you. We're putting you here to help you, but I didn't believe that because if that was true, where's my brother? My brother was left in the home that we were abused and then and were separated from one another. My only savior at the time. It failed me. You know, I, I was in 36 foster homes and three secure care placements. But some of the failure was Monica rebelling against the foster care system, including Dave and Carrie Jenkins, family friends who were foster parents to Monica on two separate occasions, and they had strict rules about church. We did introduce her to uh, faith kicking and screaming. We worship with the Church of Christ. Um, and lots of questions that she'd have, very great questions. And for us, it was not a matter of trying to defer or ignore the questions, but okay, bring them on. And we would sit down and converse with, here's why we believe this, uh, and expose her, but not impose. They were a strong Christian family. However, they got me when I was just, I was 14 and I was just so damaged. I thought they were nuts. They, you know, went to church three times a week and they their kids watched Veggie Tales and they sang Christian songs on Saturday morning. And I was like, what is wrong with these people? They're not okay, you know? And so there was a lot of resistance to what they had, but it was so crazy because so much of how they were is exactly how I am today. But Monica's ultimate trauma came when she was 15 and Bobby was about to turn 18. He was fatally shot. Details are unclear, but police reports say it was an accidental discharge. That event was what broke me and made me become hateful 
and really feel as though that the world owed me something. Feeling cornered with no way out, she found a loophole. I had a, a social worker at the time who gave me the idea that if you get married, it will then emancipate you out of the system. Monica lived many years looking for loopholes, but she says her traumatic experiences changed her from being a timid and tender-hearted girl into a bitter, angry, and violent person. She got expelled from every school she was put in, and she had built for herself a reputation of violence. And it would catch up to her in June of 2015, when the estranged father of her daughter entered her house, and unbeknownst to them, a known drug dealer had followed him to rob him. The guy comes in right after him and pulls a gun out and tells him to give him everything he has. And in my mind, I snapped. I just snapped. And he was not proficient with holding a weapon. He didn't know what he was doing. I was, I got the weapon from him. I almost got hit by him, but I did not. I um, discharged one shot and it hit him in his abdomen. He ran toward the back of the house to try to find an exit because I'm now in front of the front door. And I, like I said, I snapped, I followed him and he was no longer a threat and he was pleading and I unloaded his gun in him. And then I did not call the police. I just left. It was your house. Why it doesn't matter. It, was it would have been self-defense if I would have shot him once. Miraculously, the man survived. Monica Piles, then 29 years old, was arrested and charged with attempted murder in the second degree, sentenced to eight and a half years in the Topeka Correctional Facility. To make matters worse, Monica was also pregnant. So I had my whole pregnancy and then I gave birth and it was the hardest thing I'd ever done to know that I was not gonna ever have a relationship with this child like I did my other kids. And so that broke me. And um, I remember being in a cell and breaking down on my knees and, and just crying out to God for him to help me. And he did, he did. There was actually, that's the only point in time in my life that I ever got immediate relief. I woke up the next day and I felt better. However, I wasn't ready yet still. And so I went right back to my same old ways, just living in survival mode, manipulating people, fighting all the time, being aggressive when I was in situations that I didn't know how to handle my emotions. Monica tried to handle everything the old way for three long years until one time her fighting landed her here in segregation. But before she was sent here, a cellmate with peculiar ways gave her what she really needed. She used to read out loud every morning out of this Bible and this Bible was so easy to read. And even though she knew I didn't like her, she kept reading it to me every morning. And I was like, what is wrong with this girl? But I liked the wording in the Bible because I understood it and I wasn't struggling to understand the words, you know? And so I, I said a couple times, I like that. You know, I like that, that Bible, I can understand it. And so right when I went to go to segregation, she gave me the Bible. And I was reluctant to take it at first, but then something told me to take it, so I did. Mm -hmm and I still have that Bible. Every morning at four o'clock in the morning, I invested in talking to God. And I'm sure the guards thought I was crazy when they were walking by, because here I am sitting on my bunk, just talking to myself out loud to them. But to me, I was absolutely having a conversation with God. And I would just talk like, I was talk like I'm talking to you right now. And I did that every morning. And then I started incorporating like the word with my conversation with God. And so probably two years, after that is when I started seeing change, dramatic changes in my life. Positive changes at that. She was hired to work a coveted private industry job inside TCF. Soon after, she got a promotion to a leadership position with a higher wage, allowing her to eventually pay off all her debt. With good behavior, Monica was paroled after seven and a half years. And the first people waiting for her with open arms back in Leavenworth, Linda and Randy Clowers. I never went and seen her either in prison. Um, I couldn't I couldn't do it. I had to see my father that way. And it was very hard for me to do that. And I knew I'd get teary eyed and all of that. And so I just didn't want to do it. So I talked to her and I supported her the whole time she was in prison. and. Um, then she needed another place to stay when she got out of prison and things didn't go well with her aunt and so here she is back with us again. Good morning. Good morning. 
The private industry partner Monica had been working for hired her straight out of prison, making a livable wage where she could afford to buy a new car. Hello. The company also placed her with a co-worker and mentor to help her adjust in business and life. I had made a decision that I wasn't going to ask any personal questions because I really wanted her to have a fresh start. I didn't want her to have, um, have to share all that. But what she shared with me was, I have to share all that so that you understand where I'm coming from. Um, and she was very open from the very beginning. She was like, ask me anything. I'm an open book. And I, it was with that invitation that we had really good organic and very intimate conversations about her life and, and the trauma that really she experienced. I haven't had a lot of experience with her type of situation. Um, but I've known a lot of people with different types of trauma that have unfortunately landed them in similar situations um, being incarcerated. And there are choices that people make when they are done serving their time on how they're going to live their life. And when I look at Monica, she's making all the right choices because she puts faith first. And I, th I truly believe as a faith-based person as well, you have to be able to do those things. You have to understand that things happen for a reason in their due time, and then you become that better person that you're intended to be, that God wants you to be. Monica also says God restored her relationships with her children. It's pretty incredible actually, cause like she would call on the phone and tell us like, like I'm moving up and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And then you get out and then you finally see it start like spreading its wings. It like, like it was kind of held back like in prison and there was like, you know, things that she couldn't do. And now that she can, it's like, it's amazing to see. and. It's pretty, it's inspiring and it makes me want to work harder and kind of just be there with her. Today, Monica is working a second job, a homecoming of sorts. She's working to build up the lead ministry for the women at TCF, a part of Brothers in Blue at the men's facilities. It's obvious she is a perfect fit. For somebody to be able to walk that, that walk, right, to, you know, to go through that experience of being incarcerated, you know, all of those lonely nights, all of those, you know, dark days, if you will, all the adversity and be able to make a decision to change in a positive way. Uh, that's very relatable. You know, that's an example to be able to come back and, you know, tell others that, uh, that you can pull up, you know, kind of out of that pit with you. And, um, and she has a great desire for that. And that's very clear. Uh, she also has great integrity. And so those two things together really make a good pairing for somebody to be able to go back inside the prison and to be able to tell that story. Monica's vision is to share and build up the faith of the women at TCF to those that want it, and then provide faith-based housing from which they can transition back into society. These are pictures of her new house in Leavenworth, which she recently bought. Oh, the goodness of God. I look back, Man, I tried a lot of things, right? A lot, I'm pretty savvy. And I definitely got survival down pat in the wrong way, right? But the things that have come my way since God's entered my life, I couldn't have never done that alone. You know, the it is, a blind person could feel the difference. Monica says her daily prayer is that she will continue to grow in her faith. God, change me. Keep changing me. You don't want to be like, you don't want to conform to this world. You want to be set apart. You want to think differently. That is the true key to like, to peace and joy. You know, I, I don't live in moments of racing thoughts anymore. Or, and I, and I still don't, don't think that I don't have struggles, right? I still have days where I'm like, Dang it, I don't feel God right now. Like, what's going on? You know, but I don't live my everyday life manic. I don't live my everyday life trying to control everything that comes my way. I don't fight battles that aren't mine to fight. So I'm so much more peaceful and, and joyful. If you would like to help other women with the power of change through Jesus, Monica and other lead organizers are asking for your prayers or if you would like to volunteer and become mentors to help build this ministry or perhaps donate funds to buy Bibles and other study materials, please call or check out the website at brothersandblueentry.org forward slash lead. Of the
because of his faithfulness to us, we don't just sing of his goodness. We tell of his good news.